Hello, I'm Fantastic and Fantastic, and today I want to showcase how you can abuse unlimited passing in two-player co-op for UN2. So basically, Aki team, basically the top team, can probably swipe UN2 with relative ease, but Fantastic doesn't really have much stuff going on on his account. But with unlimited passing, you can give the turn back to always keep playing on player one, which is Mantastic in this case. In terms of weapon assist, they're mostly just OEs. I just stacked as much OEs as I really could across the team because I simply want to have just damage without thinking is the idea. A couple of like stuff I brought in extra was the Zeus Versus, which are farmable, 35 turn cooldown for 35% true gravity. So basically two Zeus versus, I can push the boss into super resolve, so I only spend one turn instead of two on the boss. It is nice. Distill gives bonus combos. Five bonus combos greatly counteracts the negative six combos you get on the second to last floor. The assists do not matter on the second side. Ryu and Ken has absorption and enhanced orbs appearing, kind of doubling up stuff that might occur, might be annoying. I can counteract both of them is the point. So the assists do not matter whatsoever on the second side because your assists get taken away. Beach Planner is brought because I need someone who has an L and Beach Planner has my L to put back my assists. And she actually can do damage and I think she's pretty so why not utilize her. Index is my auto healer. Little Masaka has got the Carrot Companion. I like this weapon assist. It gives amazing sub attribute. And then Akis are just like orb enhances like Alexander or like the Magic Stone weapon like it's not super important what you have, but what's important is being able to pass back and forward. So, Akis are no longer in danger of overcharging, but I'd rather just get to the part where I'm able to just penetrate right away and don't have to wait. So what I do is I just actually dump them all. There was a time where I had problems with skill boosts, or I just inherited low cooldown cards and that was a mistake. Beach Planner gives bonus combos, which solves this floor one because there's that combo shield. I'm just dumping actives at this point. And then re-haste them up. Three turns of haste means I can overcome the next several floors. And the bonus combos from Planner means I actually overcome that doggy over there. I have four combo orbs, one extra from a weapon assist and then just naturally occurring on Akis. You only need maximum four combo orbs. And then all Fantastic is going to do is pass. So like I said, you just pass. There's the penetration, it's ready up now. That's why I brought the haste to overcome the next floor's penetration problem, potentially. But more so the idea is you just keep passing forever and it's just swipe, swipe, swipe. It's not that exciting, so to speak, but what's exciting is the rewards at the end for how much effort you did. And this is where I feel like you can make a strong argument for just make an alt account, roll in events, get lucky with one leader that's good, like Aki in this case, and then you can populate this team with whatever you want cool. and you can clear content by playing stuff. And with three turn systems, they're terrible in co-op I find. Two turn systems are better because you need less space. Also, just usually they're leaders like say Sutonos. So three turn systems are kind of terrible in co-op. So this is a way to overcome it. And in theory, I've been, I'm able to stack significant amounts of health as well. You want to keep passing back because if you don't, you don't get the active skill charge up on the player one. So even if you had Aki available, you shouldn't use it on player two because you won't charge up your Aki's on turn player one is the problem. So this is like the only turn where I actually take a turn. Don't do any matching. My Zeus versus came up. I get overcharged and hasted here as well, so it's a way to get more skill boosts, I guess. She doesn't do anything dangerous, so just make sure you don't match a color that hurts her. And then we're back to our regular swiping. As long as you're not touching an Aki on player two, 
you're okay to match your ones, but usually you don't want to ever. But in that case, I could. I'd rather not try and deal with the 15 combo shield because there's a chance I don't overcome it based on where my combo orbs fell. So why take that chance unnecessarily? Index to start healing. We swipe. Oh shoot, I have unmatchable. Why am I not using Beach Planner? Clearly the team is very strong. Okay, well, we're gonna pass back, get that beach planner off. I can just make two L's from this board instead of trying to get even more orbs on the board here. So two L's, put back all my assists and then I'm fine. Usually I need two turns to kill this floor in particular because I don't know if I get enough combos. So I'm going to try and kill it at this point. I'm starting on turn two is when I start to try and kill it. Because if I don't get ten combos, I don't kill it. But if I get ten combos, I do kill it. We're going to find out if combos are friendly to me. Like, see, I don't know that's going to happen. So I was playing for the fact that I wouldn't get the Skyfall. Always just keep passing. There's a chance I don't kill this floor because without enough combos, I don't quite do enough damage. But luckily, all my combo orbs are... Well, we're going to do this to give myself one more combo. Will it make a difference? Nope. Yeah, because my damage is slightly lower, it's okay. We just pass back and we're fine. I have attribute absorption on all the Akis to make it a little less thinking. Like I said, passing is fun. Cool. And now I hit my regular combo count. Oh yeah, one problem with matching on the other side is you don't get cooldown charging up on your index. So I think I have enough health to just grind. I, I've usually just bashed through this part without worrying about actually healing. So that's exactly what I'm going to do again. Cool. Just keep bashing my way through. Like, I brought a bunch of Team HP Awakenings on the other side, so I'm pretty layered in Team HP. So I'm pretty sure I don't die to stuff. Destruction? No, it doesn't double up unless specifically say for like certain cards. I think like Pegasus from Yu-Gi-Oh cared about the number of types, but most are just have one or the other, and that's all you need. I'm just gonna pop. I think there might be another absorb on the next floor. I could be wrong. That's why I bring extras. Cool. Exactly, Rain. It's important to have that part. Alrighty. My health is back to its maximum potential. I was wrong about needing it, but I have Planner up just in case if it's awoken bound. I guess I feel like maybe I should just bring like a, if I had a New Year's Reach, I would use New Year's Reach to give seven turns of absorption. 
cool. But remember, whenever you need active skills, you have to use it on the base cards because your assists do get removed on floor like what, six or so, seven? But yeah, like I said, this is a way to carry another account through hard dungeons, if they have a good leader. Because you don't need to bring anything else on their side, technically, beyond the needed skill boost or random utility. Teams is it's good for my wrists. Minimal <laughs> effort needed. Obviously, it's much longer than in solo, but again, you're kind of just bringing an account along to just get extra rewards. And for half stamina and double the rewards, it can be quite lucrative. Make sure the spinners are not going to interrupt your swipe, and you're good to go. And the nice thing about co-op is I have way more health than I could in solo. Exactly, Rain. The goal of Pad is to play as little Pad with as few brain cells as possible. And this makes it all happen. So, negative six combos is pretty disastrous in all honesty. So, what I do is I use Distel, and then I don't care. Cool. And then, negative six versus positive five, I'm gonna hit enough combos to be fine. And then the last floor, I just need to make sure I match those combo orbs in the middle, which is three purple, so I'll be fine. So, the reason why I brought two Ver Zeus Verses, or Versi, is because he has 50% resolve. And why dance with his negative fifth, like his extra moves set? So, all I simply do is gravity for 10 billion. Another 10 billion or so. Pass turn, don't press quit. Might as well use her as well. Why not, right? Auto healing. Oh, I said I was going to loop the purple orb over. I didn't even bother. There's so many combos. I'm fine. Don't worry. So, like, yeah, basically Fantastic was just basically a cheerleader at that point. Point is, unlimited passing can open up some interesting co-op builds. Yes, it's slower than pure solo, but... It's half the stamina, and both the counts got all these rewards. So, if you're doing the extreme case where your alt account is not really that important, you can basically just siphon off all of those cards into your main if you really want it. And because it gives 2 billion coins, you can afford the trades. I like UN2 for the fact that it gives pretty nice, diverse rewards. A bunch of SDRs, which I always need, three super snow globes to make more things 120 and three p's because skilling up stuff is important so with that being said hopefully this video provides you with a little bit of insight as what you can do to swipe your way to victory in un2 with aki basically the same team would work in solo mode but in co-op it goes a second account gets to have a little bit of happiness as well but regardless of all that hopefully all you lovely ladies and gentlemen out there in the youtube world have a truly fantastic day i wish you best luck in your own pad adventures and Happy puzzling.